Well, thank you for joining us uh, in this video. My name is Mark Pugh. I'm Senior Vice President of Product Development and Marketing for Preferred Medical. I'm also one of the co-founders of the Transitions, as well as a co-founder of the Mentoring Program. And I'm really excited to have Mari Diaz with me, who is a member of our Mentoring Advisory Council and is a member of the Mentee Support Team that is helping facilitate that. And I thought it would be very interesting to talk with her about her running a business, prioritizing her schedule, work-life balance, because all those things are very important to everybody on planet Earth, but especially as we're transitioning uh, the industry of workers' comp and broader the insurance industry, risk management, et cetera, through that process. And I thought Mari had some really good insights into what she has learned in some ways the hard way. So Mari, uh, thank you for joining me. And if you uh, could do a, a brief introduction of who you are and, and what you got going on, and then we'll start the conversation. So I am Mari Diaz. I am the CEO and founder of OM, which is OM Marketing. And I'm also the founder of In Touch with Today's Workers' Comp Professionals and MD Apothecary. I can, can't forget about that because that's my life's passion. <laughs> So that's me. You, you, you said founder a couple of times, so three times, I think, specifically. Um, what's it like to take an idea and then make it actually happen? It's, it's hard. Um, it takes a lot of dedication and also not being afraid to fail, right? Not being afraid to fail because that's one of the things that I feel stops a lot of people from starting their own business or going after their dreams. Failure is something that you have to like appreciate and um, because without failure, you can grow. So to me, not being afraid of failure and being very passionate and driven for the things that I want, I think is what has led me to, you know, be a successful businesswoman today and have my three businesses and they're all being, you know, and all being very successful is because I am not afraid to fail. I believe in failure. I think we have to fail to succeed. And if we don't fail, then we really haven't succeeded in life. So that's really the way I see it. My motto is like, I can and I will, no matter what, <laughs> I will do it. So that's really how I, is my mindset, if, if that explains it. Gotcha. So uh, the obvious question is, how many times did you fail <laughs> before you had these three successful launches? I think we fail almost all the time we're always failing I think at least for me because I'm always creating so I'm always failing but I don't look at failure that way <laughs> so I look at failure just as another opportunity to grow and do things differently so um gosh I've been doing this now for almost 20 years and yes there's been so many times where we failed maybe we tried an idea and that idea really didn't work and maybe we just found another way of doing it so um, there's been a lot of failures to get to where I'm at today, and there still will be many more failures, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm ready for them. I'm, I'm looking forward to them. So that's how I see it. Not, not many people say that they look forward to failure, but I, I think your perspective is that the failure, it propels you to um, success uh, later on, it gives you different ways of thinking about it. You know, when, you, when you're bringing in, you know, the transitions is all about the generational shift and, and uh, the, the old people like me that are leaving and the younger generation that's coming in and the current generation that's rising to the C-suite. Um, and so all of these folks that are coming into the industry or, or elevating themselves in the industry need to have that same kind of mindset um, in embracing failure so that you can promote success. So for someone who hasn't gotten that, that mindset um, in regards to embracing failure, what, what's kind of the, 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 the big takeaway that you would want them to understand and how to perceive failure and how to respond to failure? It's a tough, I mean, that's a tough question, honestly, because it really comes from the person from within. That's something that you can just develop because if I tell you, you're just going to develop it overnight. I think it takes time. And I think, I think you have to be a student for life that's important. I think you always have to and be open to advice and not take it personal. That's one thing that I'm very open to. And maybe that helps me that if I, I don't look at myself and if someone gives me an advice that is not favorable to me, I, I still take it as a, a good thing. And I think that's important because some people take that in the wrong way. 
So I think that it's really not something that can happen just by one conversation or two conversations. It's something that you really have to, it's your mindset and you have to set your mind to it and kind of work towards that and hard to, to get to that level, but it's possible. And it's all within your mindset, really. It's how you set your mind and what you believe and believing in yourself is really truly how you get to that level and not worrying about what anybody thinks or what your critics think, or anything. It's, it's okay for, for, not everybody's gonna like you and that's okay, that's important too, to understand that and not to live by what people think. It's important to be yourself, be unique, be authentic and just be whoever you are. Like just be true to yourself. That's really the only person that matters. Everything else would just align. That's just my personal way, my perspective. And I wish more people did have that perspective and I hope to help people get to that perspective. Um, because it's important and then you just you're kind of free right once you believe that way you're free from 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 anything it doesn't bother you what anybody thinks or how mm -hmm. they feel just what matters is how you feel so, so how did you develop that mindset because that that sounds like potentially an evolution in thought uh, i don't think most people are born into kind of that concept that I'm okay that nobody, that, that not everybody likes me. I'm okay that, uh, you know, that I'm going to fail at different things and I'm going to learn. Um, is, is there anything in your, in your past, um, your upbringing, your social structure, the people that you've been around, you know, that helped you kind of develop that mindset? Because, you know, for someone who doesn't have that mindset, we want to give them that roadmap to kind of change their perception on how they think about that. Still trying to find the answer to that, to be honest with you. I am very honest and I don't have the answer to that because when I look back in my life, I've been this way since I was a little girl. Like it's always been my, my mindset and no one really trained me, helped me. So I feel like it's in my life's purpose to do that, to find a way to help someone. How can I find that roadmap, that blueprint that I was lucky enough to have where I've never really been afraid of what anybody thinks and just even I'm trying to think back and you know I my upbringing like my parents were just working people I'm the first person in my generation like in my family to actually start a business to be the entrepreneurial most of them are just you know hard working um, blue collar um, so I, I kind of was outside of the box I didn't fit in <laughs> I was like not the normal child that they were expecting or to follow i always was a rule breaker growing up so i don't know if that made a difference but i i never really followed by the rules and i did get into a lot of trouble not listening to my mom and stuff like that but i always was set in my ways and it had to be my way because i knew that it was just something internal that i knew that i had to be greater Gotcha. I think rule breaker is something I have read often uh, when I've looked at highly successful people. Um, they don't tend to, you know, follow the necessary path that has been kind of laid out for them. You know, in I got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> well, you survived, and that's that's the most important thing, and and you're thriving now, which kind of leads to, you know, how do you prioritize with three individual ventures? Um, and a whole host of people that you're working with, some people over here, some people, I mean, each, there's probably an overlapping set of people maybe for the th three ventures, but there's probably a whole bunch of people that's unique to that individual venture. How do you prioritize your time? How do you, how do you establish a work-life balance? Because it, it, that could be something I could see very easily could turn into a 24 by 7, never off kind of a schedule. Yeah, so, and that I learned the hard way, <laughs> right, like you said, because um, initially, when I did start my businesses, I, I was all about, like, just work, 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 Madi, who, who's Madi, like, it, it didn't, like, it was all about work, but, and I got to a forced quit, like, where I literally was forced to quit, like, I had to stop because I got sick, because I was burned out. So because of that, it kind of brought me to reality, and it's like, okay, what is most important, which is myself? And I had to prioritize myself and my well-being so that I can really have a successful and productive business. So that's really where it all just came to place. So I have developed a lot of um, habits. They become habits already. They weren't habits. They were routines at first. So you start them, but then they become habits. And I've developed them to be habits so that 
I put myself first and then everything just, like I said, it aligns and works perfectly. And um, I think we talked about it <laughs> in one of our previous conversations, but as a, you know, a tip or something that has helped me a lot has been batching my work. And I know we talked about it briefly, but batching is something that is super important because that way before I'll just give you an example, like I'll be working on something and I'll get an email and I'll stop, respond to that email. I'll get a call. I will stop. So I was really never productive. I was just working on a billion things. And I felt I was like, I'm busy because busy I was, but I wasn't being productive. Mm -hmm. So now the difference is that I'm productive. I'm still busy, but I'm productive now. And I batch my work. Throughout the whole week, I have a schedule and I time myself like today is my day for conversations, being on the phone, speaking to people. And then I have a day that is just solely for being hyper focused on one project. That's all I'm working on that day. And that's really what has helped me create balance. Um, if, before that, it was a mess. <laughs> it was working on this, working on that. So yeah, I was extremely busy. And that's where the stress comes in. That's where you, illness comes in. And that's where you get burnt out. So being able to just batch your work, hyper focus on certain things, then that really can lead to being very productive and not feeling overwhelmed and being to create that balance where, you know, you come first. So you as a person come first and then everything else. It doesn't mean you that you're not being productive. It doesn't mean that you don't care about your work. It doesn't mean any of that. It just means that you have to fill your cup first to then be able to help anybody because you can't help someone if you're depleted. So that's really how it was a reality check for me, but now I get it. <laughs> so I've been like that for several years now. So I'm really prioritize my self care over anything right now to make sure that I'm productive and that I can give back to my clients the way that I want to and truly can, can give back. Gotcha. It, it sounds strategic. Um, and oftentimes I think um, I can only speak for myself, but probably speak for a whole bunch of people that we respond like what you did we respond to things that are happening and, and we've got a to-do list. I've, I've got a to-do list every day um, that I check off because I, I like the concept of, you know, actually, and I've got it, you know, scheduled on my calendar and whatnot. Um, but things happen um, and uh, sometimes you can control it, sometimes you can't. It seems like oftentimes I'm reacting a lot and it sounds like your focus is strategically and being very diligent about that, not allowing the, the urgent to creep in on the important. Um, and it, it sounds like you obviously kind of learned that the hard way, but now it's just a part of who you are, right? It is a part of who I am now, but not to say that there's days because we're not perfect. So there is days where you can be reactive. I'm not saying that it's a perfect life and it's a perfect system because there are certain days that emergencies do happen. And you thought you were gonna have this Wednesday where you're gonna be talking and you're not because an emergency happened with a client or something that you have to handle. And that, that's where you have to be, that's where the mindset comes in where like, okay, this doesn't ruin all, every, all my efforts. It just means that today I have to switch a little bit and be adjustable to things that happen and change and go with it because if you don't then that can just create a whole you can go down a rabbit hole and then it can just create a whole mess and put you back to where you were so that you have to know that it's not perfect so yes it sounds like it's a great idea and you can do it but you can there's days where you maybe not, won't be able to do it and that's okay mm -hmm. so that's important to, to understand that and, and i think the the point is that you that those things happen but that's a one-off that's not strategically how you go into a week or a day you've got a specific plan. Do you schedule time for yourself? Uh, I know you've talked about, you know, self-care and making sure that you don't get burned out again. You know, do you schedule, you know, a nap at two o'clock or do you schedule um, <laughs> friends or, you know, how, how do you schedule that and make sure that you have set aside time specifically to, to for self-care? That's my favorite topic. <laughs> but yeah, so it, like I said earlier, it already became a habit. So I, it, and, and one thing that, Another advice that I give everyone, you do have to schedule it so it can get to a habit. You have to put it in that calendar until you get used to it. But my self-care already is into my life. It fits into my day-to-day -day schedule. So it's not something that I'm like, oh, stressed about. I've got to make an appointment to get self-care. It's already there. So it's just prior to having a morning routine, you know, doing certain routines that I do in the morning that already give me that self-care, like meditation, journaling, um, putting on a mask. You know, it's just one of the things that I have, you know, one of the habits, I guess is a better way of saying it, is I go to bed early. Um, 
everyone that knows me personally knows that like by eight o'clock I am in bed and that's kind of part of my habit. Um, maybe I'm not asleep, but I'm already in bed. I already set the tone. I'm already relaxed. I'm not, I don't have my TV on either. I'm reading. So that's part of self-care right there. And so I'm able to get up earlier. And when I get up earlier, I have more time in the morning. So by the time it's eight o'clock, I already did a lot of my self-care routine. I could have done my meditation, my journaling, because I already had a really good night's rest. So I think, and that didn't happen overnight either. That happened with putting it in my calendar, you know, making sure that I was accountable for that. Because if you put it in the calendar and you have a meeting, you know that you have a meeting, right? You have to go to that meeting and you make yourself. So it's the same thing. So you set yourself in your calendar and you say, you know, this, I'm going to do yoga this morning. And you, if you don't, then you just, you pretty much stood yourself up, <laughs> right? And you don't want to do that because you wouldn't do that to a client, right? You wouldn't just tell the client, hey, I'm going to meet you at eight o'clock and let's forget it. I'm not going to go to the meeting. <laughs> Who cares? So you can't do that to yourself. So if you don't do that to yourself, then it becomes a habit. And, and that's really what, what I have created as just habits of, you know, going to bed early, waking up early. I think that's really key to being able to have to fit in that self-care during the day so it doesn't feel like it's a chore or something that you have to do. It's already part of your second like nature to do. So that that's really where I am, how I've been able to, to get there. <laughs> gotcha. Well, you know, on the mentoring advisory council, you uh, chose to be on the mentee team. We separated into two different teams, mentor team, mentee team, uh, and the people that support that. Um, so you're, you're coming in kind of as an executive sponsor, you're helping people that are trying to be mentees and helping them through the process of selecting mentor. Um, what's the primary word of advice that you have in the back of your head as you're engaging for the very first time with a candidate mentor that goes, you know, I'm just graduated from college. I'm very new in my career. Maybe I'm mid-career. Maybe I've been in the workers' comp or risk management industry for 10 years, but it's time for me to take the next step. And I'd like to engage with someone who's kind of been there, done that. Or maybe it's someone who's been in the industry for 25 years and they want to stay fresh um, and to engage with maybe the younger generation or, you know, someone in a different organization or a different kind of specialty or different things. So mentees are obviously coming from a variety of different perspectives, and we've seen that so far. So what, what is your first word of advice for a mentee, you know, that is trying to figure out what kind of mentor I want, what do I want out of that mentor relationship, that kind of thing? Honestly, for me, I don't know if this is the right answer, but it's just being yourself, right? I, if I'm going to mentor or be a mentee, I'm just going to be myself. I, I'm not going to or fluff anything. I don't think you should do that. I think you should be very honest with that person, kind of get to know that person truly and see what their life's purpose, what their passions are, what their whys are, and then kind of guide them based on that information. So if I talk to someone and they tell me what, you know, you, people sometimes don't even know what their purpose or their whys are. That's something hard to find out. And I'm still trying to find mine. But even as you're, when you speak to that person, you kind of get to know that person. I think that's when you really can tell or guide them that. But my advice is be yourself, be authentic and true to you. And then you can help someone and, and guide them properly on what's the best way and share knowledge because sharing knowledge, I think is one of the most important things we can do. Um, we all have different knowledge. We all capture things differently. So sharing our knowledge um, in a very authentic way and just being honest with that person, I think that would just help everyone. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's really how I see things is just being true to the person and true to yourself. And um just finding that that dharma within you, your life's purpose, so that you can um, help others and serve better. Yeah, you started it with you weren't sure if that was the right answer. There is no wrong or right answer, but that was a great answer, <laughs> and it's consistent yeah. with everything. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's consistent with everything else you've discussed up to this point because you 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 know the self care, the honesty. Um, you know, with yourself in regards to schedule, in regards to work-life balance, in regards to, you know, managing people, all that kind of stuff. And I, I think that's great advice. Uh, you know, sometimes, um, you know, I don't know if you've ever had this happen to you. I've had it happen to me many times at conferences and stuff. You got kind of that drive-by, you know, you got the, the brief encounter with somebody that you know, and they go, how's it going? And you say, good. 
you know, the, the person who's asking how's it going doesn't really care because they're continuing to move forward. And my good is probably a mask of what really is happening, but I didn't really want to engage in that depth. And I think from a mentor mentee relationship, it's much beyond that superficial and it's more to that, that, that deeper. What's really going on? Yeah. What's, what's that? really like what's really happening, what's truly happening, like speak to your soul, like what, you know, kind of in, disengage and look at it and, and, and look at your whole life and see where you want to go and what is really your why and your purpose. I think that's an exercise that everyone needs to do and, and just step back and look and see where, where you are and where you want to go and how you want to serve and how you want to be there for others as well. Because I think that's important that you in life, you give back. Right. Not just it's not about just you, 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 but truly giving back is really, I think, when you're really successful, when you're when you're at a point where you can give back. And I think giving back knowledge is one of the highest things you can give. Mm -hmm. So and it doesn't yeah. come anything. It's free. No. So one of the things to ask is your why. Um, and that is important to understand because that, that leads to all the rest of it. I really enjoyed our conversation. I think some great um, wise words uh, from you uh, on this. Any, any final thoughts um, as, we, as we finish up? I think one of the things that I want to say is that to anyone that's listening is that it's important to, to when you're, and nowadays how we have all this like social media and we have so much coming at us to really find time to not be, not take in a lot of negative, right? To kind of just, if, and one of the things that I have done, like clean up your social media, clean up your, you, the energy, the people around you. I know that we outgrow a lot of people and, and that's okay. You can feel bad about that because I believe everyone in your life has a purpose. So not everyone is going to be the, what you're expecting that person to be, but they're there for a reason. So you have to kind of see what reason they're there for you and just believe in them for that purpose. Not like, I don't know how to explain that, but it's, it's just the way that you look at people. And I, um, certain people in our lives are, are you, you can't expect them to always be there for you, but they're going to be there for you in, in another way that you might not, it's not what you expected. So don't expect, you know, it's one of the things like a lot of things from people and just um, be realistic about it and clean up your social media. Look for things that are positive, bring you positivity because there's a lot of negativity out there right now. So anything that you can do to just be around, surround yourself with positive people, I think that has helped me a lot as well. I, I totally agree. I, I've gone through the whittling process on my social media to say that <laughs> for sure. <Get> out. <laughs> well, great. Well, thank you so much um, for um, our time together. Thank you so much for being a part of the advisory council. Uh, and the mentee team. Um, very excited about how we're going to be able to connect people uh, and help further the, uh, you know, the value of our industry and the people, most importantly, the value of the people in the industry. So thank you so much for your involvement. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me.